the other big controversy that happened was between RFK, Joe Rogan, and Peter Otez. <laughs> You know, now, now, mind you, uh, the Joe Rogan podcast with RFK was trending all last week because RFK said some uh, eye-opening stuff. It's a, actually a really good podcast. You should go watch it. Um, Peter Hotes decided to jump into an already massive trending topic and throw gasoline on it. And here's that tweet. Spotify has stopped even sort of trying to stem Joe Rogan's vaccine misinformation. It's really true whoever just awful and from all the online attacks i'm receiving after this absurd podcast it's clear many actually believe this nonsense so i don't know uh what online attacks he is experiencing but uh if it's on twitter you can hit the mute button on any conversation that you don't like you know and if someone's spamming you you can block them that's an option. <laughs> you know, and if I remember right, uh, they mentioned him once in the podcast, and uh, it was because they were talking about Fauci. You know, he didn't need to make this public announcement denouncing Joe Rogan and RFK, but he did, and Joe Rogan fired back. Peter, if you claim what RFK Jr. is saying is misinformation, I am offering you $100,000 to the charity of your choice if you are willing to debate him on my show with no time limit. So, after that tweet, Peter Hotez, being the self-victimized prick he is, responded to Joe with uh, no answer, but uh, with a, a come on, bro, statement. Joe, you have my cell, my email. I'm always willing to speak with you. Come on, bro. <laughs> I get fucked, dude. I hate him so much. <laughs> you know, and th that's what I love about Joe Rogan. He's not going to play your fucking game. You know, the low blow here was Peter Hotez's attempt to play the victim, not Joe calling him out. You know, and Joe Rogan knows what he's trying to do, so he then calls him out on it. This is a non-answer. I challenged you publicly because you publicly quote tweeted and agreed with that dog shit vice article. If you're really serious about what you stand for, you now have a massive opportunity for a debate that will reach the largest audience a discussion like this has ever had. If you think someone else is better qualified, suggest that person. And then he continues to say down here, by the way, Peter Hotez, I saw this tweet that you deleted. And the tweet that Peter Hotez deleted is uh, was for the, uh, he was retweeting uh, the, uh, the res his response to the $100,000 uh, statement that uh, challenge that Joe put out. Be serious, Joe. That's what you throw out for hunting buddies on a weekend. <laughs> a $50 million endowment which you, Spotify, RFK Jr. can easily afford. Not for me, but so we can continue making low-cost, patent-free vaccines for the world's poor, preceded by RFK Jr.'s public apology. <laughs> what a fucking prick, dude. <laughs> he is, dude. <laughs> and that's why he deleted it. Because he's like, oh, shit, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> because that's him basically saying that he's going to be uh, okay with debating. <laughs> you know, um, after all that, right, you know, instead of letting uh, sleeping dogs lie, Peter Hotez could have just let the altercation die in the realms of Twitter, but he instead runs to MSNBC to play the victim, and here's the clip. Set aside for a moment that Joe Rogan wouldn't even be a neutral moderator of such a debate. He's endorsed anti-vax nonsense many times before. But you just can't, in general, debate with conspiracists and loons. You can't debate whether up is down, hot is cold, black is white. They never change their minds, and they win just by you agreeing to share a platform with them.
What's the expression? Never wrestle with a pig, you both get dirty, and the pig gets 40,000 new followers on Twitter. Joining me now is Dr. Peter Hotez himself. Thank you for coming back on the show. It's a shame it's under these circumstances. I understand you've been hit with a deluge of harassment over the last 24 hours. There was even uh, some crazy people who tracked you down and accosted you in person at your home and shouted at you. How are you doing after being called out by the world's richest man and America's most powerful podcaster? Well, you know, the the attacks from the anti-vaccine lobby do come in waves and and this time though it's uh it's it's been one one of the uh, one of the tougher ones because as you point out of physical stalking and and the incessant threatening emails and 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 the stuff online is just total wackadoodle um and let's face it when you have RFK and Junior and Joe Rogan and Elon Musk all tag teaming those tr trace hombres at the same time. I mean, that that probably includes just about yeah. every follower on Twitter. So it's it's it was uh, a pretty pretty overwhelming. Tag teaming. That's what they were doing, huh? I don't think any of them were tag teaming there. You know, uh, Elon came in and put in his two cents, and so did RFK Jr. and so did Tim Pool. But nobody was constantly spamming you tag teaming. <laughs> You're being a little bitch, Peter. <laughs> you know, um, if you can't handle the backlash that comes with expressing your opinion in the public square, then you shouldn't do it. Period. You now, he ran to MSNBC to spread falsehoods about Rogan, RFK, and Musk because he didn't like what they were saying. RFK, Tim Pool, Rogan, and Musk did not attack Peter Hotez. They engaged in a conversation he started. 